Hello everyone and welcome back to OnPoint HQ and the 13th video in the Bolt Action Basic series. In this video, we're going to be looking at the basic turn sequence and how this differs from a standard I go, you go game. So, let's start at the beginning of the game. The first step is to see how many order dice each player will have. On the screen now is a very basic and very small army as an example to show how this works. I have one HQ unit, two infantry sections, a medium mortar team, a medium machine gun team, and a panzer three. This is six units, so I am assigned six order dice. Now let's say that my opponent has seven units. This means that they will be given seven order dice. So this means at the start of the game, there will be a total of 13 order dice placed inside a bag or some other type of receptacle. It is not essential to use order dice. You can, of course, use different colored chits or tokens. Just always ensure that any chits or tokens are of the same size and consistency to make the drawing process fair. To start the turn and activate units, an order dice is drawn from the bag and handed to the player whose army that dice relates to. In this example, the first dice to be drawn is a grey German dice, and so this is handed to me. I now have to decide what order to assign and to what section. I decide to issue an advance order to one of my infantry sections and move that unit accordingly. I place the dice face up next to the section to show that it has A activated and B so I can see what order was assigned. With the unit's activation now over, it is time to draw another dice from the bag to determine who will activate the next unit. The drawing of dice from the bag in this manner represents different sections seizing the initiative. When all units have been activated, the turn has ended. At this stage, all dice are returned to the bag. The only exceptions are units that have been assigned ambush orders and didn't activate, or units that finish the turn as down. The player can decide to keep these orders assigned, in which case the dice remains on the table and is not returned to the bag. As the game progresses, units will become casualties, or fail morale tests, and flee the battlefield. If a unit is destroyed, lost, or leaves the game in any other way, their dice is handed to their opponent. As you start to lose more and more units, the number of dice in the dice bag will reduce, and this will impact the chances of your dice being pulled from the bag. Standard games of bolt action will normally last for six turns, with a dice roll determining if a seventh turn is to be played. Now you may be playing a scenario with specific victory conditions, such as ensuring a unit escapes the table, or achieving a certain task or objective. Always be sure to check to see if the victory conditions have been met at the end of each turn. For a standard game of bolt action, at the end of the game you'll tally up who was more of the enemy's dice to determine victory. Then it's time to sit down and look back over the heroic and nail-biting parts of the game over a cup of tea. As with the rest of the bolt action basic series, this is just a very brief overview of the turn sequence in games of bolt action. For further information, I would always recommend picking up a copy of the main bolt action rulebook. If you have any comments or questions about the turn sequence in bolt action or any other elements of the game, please leave them down below and I will certainly respond to all comments and questions. But as always, thanks for watching, do take care, may your dice roll well, and I will catch you all in the next video. So, bye bye for now.